welcome back to my channel so today i have a new topic and a new theme so the theme is some support for research so today the topic under that will be interdisciplinary research prospects so everyone is into research now and academic institutions also are expected to do a lot of research so let me give you some idea about interdisciplinary research prospects which will be useful so first of all to know about research so research is a process of discovering new knowledge so basically you may do some work which is new novel right and there has to be some theories which are involved in that so these theories might be known before but the way of representing this ideas in a new way so that it is not there previously so some kind of non obviousness should be there and some kind of innovativeness should be there or the way of presenting the data the application side so there has to be some novelty to what you are trying to do so that is all about research in the present context so priorly there were only some research organizations which were mainly involved in research to name a few nrdc isro drdo and the list goes on right so these were the usual uh, organizations which were involved in major part of the research but now we know that academic institutions are also expected to do a lot of research so it is not only teaching learning it is also involving a lot of research activities and this is very much necessary for all the accreditation processes like a lot of marks is involved for nac nba nerf ranking and so on so that is why the need for research and the importance of research has to be understood by one and all so coming to some more details like for research you need to have a clear understanding about the subject knowledge plus you may have to have a good team where you have like minded people who can understand the concepts who can share the ideas and you can implement it implement the ideas in a better way so this is just to show you that okay a blind man story uh, of a elephant so if you have a team and you are blindfolded and then you don't know the proper understanding of the ideas then you will uh, identify each part of this elephant based on your understanding so you are not discussing anything with anyone you are blindfolded and you just based on the touch you are trying to identify what might be this particular object so now you can see this person is telling that this is a snake sorry this person is telling this is a sword this person is telling it looks like a tree this person is telling it looks like a fan the ears this person is telling since it is rough it looks like a wall and this person is telling the tail uh, looks like a something like a thread or something like a rope so because the pro proper understanding is not there and proper communication is not there you are not able to judge what is the actual thing so that is why there is the importance of understanding and there is the importance of proper team work and that only will help in successful research activities so coming to some details about the types of research so if you are trying to do a research within your discipline single discipline you are not involving any other people of other disciplines then we call such type of research as interdisciplinary research whereas if you are trying to view one's discipline with perspective of another such type of research is called as cross disciplinary research so there are much more advancements which are happening now like multidisciplinary research where multiple uh, disciplines are involved like maybe engineering stream healthcare stream that is medicine stream dental stream so different streams are involved together and uh, some research activity is happening and some finally maybe a product is coming out so in this way a lot of uh, uh, variations in research has been happened over years so one more uh, variety might be a interdisciplinary research where you are integrating the knowledge from different disciplines so you can see here when it is a multidisciplinary you just share the data and then maybe some kind of work is done so you don't have much knowledge about the other discipline but when it is a interdisciplinary research you are taking some ideas from other discipline and you are implementing your idea there so there is a much more connection or much more interaction happening in interdisciplinary research compared to multidisciplinary research and the most uh, uh, the last one here is the transdisciplinary research where complete integration is happening so this is how it looks like so a lot of knowledge sharing will happen between the disciplines and there where you are trying to do some research activity will be called as a transdisciplinary research so understanding these types of research is very important to identify which kind of research you are uh, mainly focusing on 
So coming to interdisciplinary research, as I told you, definitely a teamwork is very important and like-minded people in the team also matters. So there has to be a proper coordination here. Otherwise, the research activities may not be done in a proper way. So just to give you some more highlights on this, like uh, I spoke about interdisciplinary research, right? So just I typed AIML because AIML is the boom now. Everybody talks about artificial intelligence and machine learning. So I just typed this in uh, Google Scholar uh, with a combination with healthcare. Since I'm from biotechnology background, I thought why not try com uh, combine these two and see how much will be the hits. Okay, so this is the recent hit which I did in 2023 and I, can you see here the hits is 85,600. So you can see so many people are working in this area. Similarly, when I type AIML in membrane technology, so this is like water purification and those applications, I got 1,10,000 hits. So you can just see a lot of work is happening in these areas, basically interdisciplinary research where the concepts of AIML that is machine learning, deep learning. So these concepts have been applied in membrane technology, healthcare, nanotechnology and so on so that we can identify different things at the earlier stages. So this would be very helpful in designing good quality membranes in healthcare applications for detecting tumors, cancers at very early stage. So in that way, a lot of research is happening in this area, which will be very useful. So apart from that, you everyone knows about smartwatches now. So uh, kids are very much keen on having a smartwatch. So they feel it very happy if they have a smartwatch. So these smartwatches also have got a lot of uh, applications. And one of such application would be uh, electrical health heart sensor. Like uh, you can have an inbuilt app for ECG. So basically you get to know the heart rhythm. Okay, so this might be very useful uh, in case you're having a a serious condition this can be identified by this app at a very early stage so basically uh, this is identified in the app as some graphical image so when there is a, there's a condition called as atrial fibrillation where because of the blood clots happening in the heart your heart rhythm will not be proper so this is a normal heart rhythm so you can see some lines here so you need not concentrate much on what are these lines but basically understand that there is a pattern in which the normal heart rhythm is seen and based on that there is a normal rhythm where we see continuous lines here right but when there is a, a serious condition of blood clot happening in the heart there will be some variations in this pattern can you just check this and this can you see the difference here so there are some irregularities here so here there is no lines yeah, there is lines and there is a lot of irregularity here. So that indicates that there is some problem with the heart, some issue with the heart. So based on this uh, uh, app, definitely you can uh, go to a doctor immediately and see what is the serious condition. Otherwise, this might even lead to heart attacks, strokes, heart failure. So, so many things can happen. So these kind of uh, applications would be very useful for identifying these kind of issues. So in this way, this is again an AI application which has been used. So that is why this would be a very good uh, research. So coming to uh, again some uh, some more research in this area like crack detection features are also there, crash detection, sorry. So in case you had an accident, so this smartwatch can help you. So you get a, a display like this, like it looks like you are having a hard fall, whether we need to call an emergency service or you're okay. So you can click on I'm okay if you're okay and if you're not okay you can just click on this and definitely an emergency service call will go and immediately people will come to save you. So in this way a lot of AI applications are coming up for different uh, reasons and that could be one of it. So even uh, we are trying to have an interdisciplinary team and we are trying to do some work on these lines. So we are also doing some work and as I told you we have uh, uh, done some papers also on this. So this was one of the work which we did where we tried to detect uh, giant cells in a nasal aspirate okay so basically for early detection of measles disease so this work uh, was uh, funded by vgst and uh, this is the work that we did so basically measles disease uh, uh, it's a disease which can spread very widely and it is mainly seen in kids but it can have happen even in elders and it uh, spreads very easily so basically during measles disease uh, uh, usually the rashes and other things are the common things and that happens at the later stages and uh, we thought why not try to uh, use uh, AIML for early detection. So for the uh, uh, research we have done this. So basically we had taken the images from repositories and here the nasal aspirate uh, basically the idea was ours. So if a nasal aspirate is taken 
and we smear it on a glass plate and uh, then we take a microscopic image. So in case the person is suffering from measles, there are something like giant cells which will appear in the nasal aspirate. So this has been uh, reported in literature long back. So we, not, we thought why not use this for AIML. So that is how uh, in case we take an image of this and we uh, develop a model using AIML, the giant cells could be identified at very, very early stage. And once the giant cells are there, definitely the uh, confirmation is that the person is suffering from measles. So he can be uh, identified at an early stage and he can be seen to it that the contagious stages are reduced and the person gets recovered at a very early stage. So in this way, a paper was published. Similarly, we have done some work on uh, biotechnological application also. Like we have a, a experiment called as transformation where we try to transform the cells by introducing a plasmid and if the plasmid gets transformed into the organism, we get a color change. So this is usually done in the lab where we, are, we have the blue color colonies and the white color colonies. Blue color are not transformed and white color are transformed. So usually what we do in the lab is we count this manually. So when we are doing this manually, we are prone to a lot of errors because we may not do it properly or the plate may not be very uh, done in a proper way where you cannot identify it properly. So we thought why not use AIML here. So in that way we have tried to use this using uh, AIML where computer vision uh, technique was used and based on that the uh, system is capable of uh, identifying the non-transformed and the transformed cells and it also calculates the efficiency of transformation. So in this way directly if you have the, done this experiment in the lab and just take a pic of this and upload it in this app we will get our results that is the calculating the efficiency. So in this way some more a lot of work can be done with interdisciplinary ideas but basically you need to discuss this with your uh, interdisciplinary team and see how we can move forward. So definitely the benefits it develops a lot of critical thinking. You get new, new uh, areas of interest. You can club so many things. So definitely this would be a lot of inspiration. So critical thinking and uh, uh, having a better team would definitely help. So even our uh, PM, he has a lot of uh, promotion for a lot of interdisciplinary research. And every year a lot of hackathons will be happening and uh, students can participate in such kind of hackathons. One of such is Smart India Hackathon. Every year we have this. So this will again lead a uh, need to a interdisciplinary team formation and which will help in solving a lot of problems given by the uh, uh, lot of authorities. So they have uh, even uh, Ministry of Education Innovation cell is there. So this also has a lot of data and there is a portal called as Yukti portal where a lot of ideas has been displayed. So just by reading these ideas you get a lot of knowledge and you can think how to use these ideas and how to develop new products. So coming to interdisciplinary, again, we have not only engineering students or MSc, BSc students doing a lot of research. We have school students also having a lot of innovative ideas, which can be transformed into a lot of innovative products. So this is a student from Telangana. So she had a lot uh, in Telangana or any places here, we know a lot of peanuts is grown. So the peanut shell, which is a waste material. Okay, so there is a lot of plastic menace, like people are using plastic for growing plants. And once the plant is removed from the plastic, the plastic is thrown here and there. And we know that there can be a lot of microplastic pollution that can happen. And it, uh, the microplastics, you know, it is seen everywhere now in the water, in the breast milk, you, uh, in the feces, you name anything, microplastic residues have been found in that. So this is a serious concern. So she, what she did is she tried to develop this eco-friendly pots from this peanut shell. Okay, so we know this peanut shell is very rich in phosphorus and calcium, plus it can retain a lot of water and it can even biodegrade since it is naturally occurring. So she thought why not use this for developing the pot so that later stages it gets degraded and there's no issue of microplastics. So this idea was uh, got a lot of support and later they could develop this biopod. So this is the system by which they tried to develop these biopods and they are developing this in a better way now, right? So is, uh, initially she just had a prototype, but later with the support, she has uh, developed these pods which are utilized now. So in this way, a lot of work can happen. So you can just, just need to think about how you can uh, uh, take your idea forward. So as you, I spoke about the new topic today, so the basic takeaways today is our uh, team building, which is very important and collaboration. So you, you cannot do everything alone. You need a team. You need people who can support you. 
So have a strong team and then see how the research moves forward. So be open to learning new things. So we have a mentality like if somebody tells something that is not my area, why should I bother? So that will not help. Definitely you have to think about other areas also and see how you can club this into your area. So be ready for exploring and be ready for learning. Thank you for watching. Do like my videos, do subscribe to my channel Geeks and Geeks and please share this video with maximum people so that I can make much more educational videos for you. Thank you for your support till date. Have a nice day.